Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Ooh, too fast. Welcome back to Space Engineers. Yeah, I was watching the sunset. A little weird to me, but it's okay. Hi. So, we're back in the world, and it's been an interesting night for me. Because I wasn't even playing, and I left Space Engineers running all night long. Because I didn't want to sit here and try and do a video and everything like that, and not be prepared. Because I don't know about you, but I was getting really tired of not having power. And that being, like, the sole focus of the entire episode. So, we have power. woo de doo so I'll show you in just a moment, but there is something I wanted to share. Because the duchy, you guys, you mean a lot to me. You really do. And I got a little bit of a surprise. I, I know a lot of you don't use Twitter, but there are those of you who do. And I got my first fan art. I was really, really excited and really, really touched. And here it is. It is a little bit of fan art from Lewis Bennett. And as you can see on the picture and everything like that, got the Twitter tag and everything. So um, thank you, Lewis. I, it's my first fan art and I was really happy and really touched so thank you for that and I would have done it a couple episodes ago but I had, didn't have permission or anything so thanks Lewis yeah you got a shout out <laughs> all right let's get back inside and see what's going on here so as you know I do have a master script and I'm not even gonna use the elevator I'm just gonna fall because that's a thing. We are at 100% capability for stored power. And I have been sitting here at this particular station the whole time. Just watching that bar. It was a long night. So what we did have was... We'll go through here and... What I was able to do is I left the industrial centrifuge running. Not necessarily the stone crusher because I don't think I have any stone. And the reason I say that the industrial centrifuge is not cheaty is you see all these values here for the magnesium and the silver and platinum, uranium, silver, gold, iron, cobalt, nickel, all that stuff, right? That's is the values after nearly 300k of gravel 300k and that's all it gives you so not cheaty and a really good way to get rid of your stone if you're looking for a way to do that in your own survival world i think i'm pretty sure let me hide empty real quick yeah, I'm pretty sure that I have, yeah, still another 80k of gravel left to get through. But we'll go up here. And the max it can hold is 108k. So as I've been checking on the power situation and everything, <clears throat> I've been going through and just putting more gravel in the centrifuge. Saving the world, all that good stuff. Yeah. So the sun is down now. And pretty soon, I'm going to start running out of power from the solar panels. So, one thing I am going to do is I'm going to go through and get the batteries. And since they're on full power every single one of them, I'm going to set it to semi-auto. 
because now it's going to start putting some power into place. And one thing I am going to do is, yeah, we can take the elevator up. I have power in the station now. But it's like, one of the things that I've been trying to wrestle with is to whether or not use the modded parts and whatnot, because I'm noticing day by day that a lot of the mods that I have, I think six now, because watch. Notice no HUD. Yeah, a lot of the mods are going to the dev branch of the game. And I'm still running this world in the stable branch. So they're starting to not work anymore. And I'm a little afraid that a lot of the mods that I have that are you know, kind of central to the production and everything are going to go the way of the dodo. And they're going to go to the dev branch. So we'll see nanites still work and this and xpar's elegant solar still work here so it's still a viable solution for now now what i am going to do is over here these collectors are way smaller than those but these i can put more on the side here for you know like the early morning gather because it seems like I get a lot on this side really, really early. And not so much over there, which is why I have the big ones there. For once the sun starts to go down and everything. This side actually gets a lot of the... Yeah, I've been having the world open all night. I kind of learned a thing or two. But this side of the world or sorry, this side of the complex actually gets a lot of sun. <coughs> sorry. And um, these, what's funny about these is that when they're actually working, they're not working right now, as you can tell, but when they're actually working, these, one of these has like twice the power uh, production capability of just one vanilla solar panel. So what I'm thinking is that this whole wall needs to be all of these. And I left those just for demonstration. Because these put out like 150 kilowatts. These put out like 260. Which I know is not exactly twice, but it's still significant. A significant difference. And they're smaller and I can put more without having to damage the aesthetics of the side. So that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take these down. But first, I should probably reposition Sparky, because we're going to need Sparky. And you'll notice something a little bit different about Sparky. Um, remember, uh, like an episode or two ago, I mentioned that the landing gear on the Ebonhawk were broken? and that they would need repairs. Funny thing I discovered, because I was running out with Sparky and trying to do something over there, that uranium deposit over there, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, as soon as I would get rel any relative closeness to the ground, um, and if the piston landing gear happened to actually touch the ground voxels and everything, they'd pfft, gone. The landing gear is just pfft, gone. So, what I did, what I had to do, I went, alright, let's start you up. God, I love that sound. straighten you out a little bit sparky all right we'll jump down for half a second so i replaced the landing gear and these are really really good landing gear um i should really do a mod of like i should really do a video of all the mods that i have in this world but these are shao corp 
these are Shalcorp. The landing skids. Right? They're they're actually really, really good. Uh, remember the landing pads that we had on the Azura? <clears throat> they are very nice. Very nice indeed. I applaud the modder. Subscribe, endorse, all that stuff. It's actually really good and it's pretty low profile and they're very hardy like we know that uh, Sparky's engines are really strong and you see how close to the ground they actually light up so I could actually I could actually have it where Sparky is this far off the ground Shut down her engines. Shut down her inertial dampeners. I don't even really need to do that. Jump out. And bam. Sparky is parked. I really, really like that. Because it, it kind of keeps her safe, you know? And like getting close to the ground voxels and everything. That's much, much better. I don't even have to turn off her inertial, inertial dampeners anymore just to land her on the ground. She's good. And it floats you up a little bit. Really, really nice. I did not mean to do that. Get back here. Alrighty. So what we're gonna do... Press the right button first. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna maneuver Sparky so that we get within relative close proximity to these. Because I pretty much have to deposit the parts for every two solar panels. Because, yeah, solar cells are heavy. That is totally a thing. And while we're doing this and being busy and everything, I did want to mention that I have a plan. I am thinking that going forward, I'm going to have a schedule with the channel. Now, usually I don't record during the day because, well, it's summer. During the day, it's freaking hot. Like, I would usually have a fan on by now, but I don't because I'm recording. Because it would totally pick it up. But I needed to today. I lost components. That was not smart. I'm going to have to go get those. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, recording in the heat of the day, I do not recommend this. This is a bad idea. Don't do it. So... What I have been doing, but that I didn't do last night because I was just trying to store up as much power as I possibly could. Any more components? No. No more components. <clears throat> anyway. Last night I didn't do it because I was in the midst of charging up the power for the station and everything, right? So, generally I've been recording at night and then doing the rendering and uploading and everything like that during the day. So I'm going to continue to do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have space engineers on 
Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now, yeah, I'm going to have Space Engineers on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's the schedule going forward. Tuesday, Thursday, Space Engineers. Okay. That being said, what I'm about to do is I'm going to hit Control G and I'm going to go into build mode. And you'll see something down on the bar that I will reference later. But what I'm going to do is I'll select it. I can build from the ship. Now this has been a feature in Space Engineers for a while, but I haven't really used it and I don't know why. As long as you have the components... Wait, what the heck? Yeah, you can paint. You can do all of the options you can in regular build mode from the ship in this mode. It's actually really quite spiffy. And saves time. Like, really saves time. Alrighty. Drop Sparky down a tad. There we go. And one more. And I'm only gonna do a couple of these. Now you hit control G, go back into regular mode. One, select the welders. And we are going to town, ladies and gentlemen. Building with a ship in space engineers. Oops. That's how you do that. It's actually really, really cool. One of the features that Keen added, I am very excited about. Oh, I don't have any metal grid. So, I do have a solution for that. I have not turned on the Nanite factory yet. That one's complete. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. One side of the Rickman complex is all solar. <clears throat> Which is very, very nice. Very nice indeed. And we'll just go get Sparky set back down again. God, I love this ship. I really need to build another one just like it for mining. Maybe I'll put her up on the workshop. I'm gonna have to list all the mods, but I mean, it's only a couple of mods. There we go, landing gear is locked. Turn off her engines, conserve her power. Now we can actually we can actually turn her off. And I am confident that Sparky is perfectly safe right where she is. I You know, I I don't know the person who's behind this particular mod, but it is really really awesome. Thank you for all of the mod goodness that you do. I really like a lot of it. So, there you go. I should probably link the mod. I may do that. <clears throat> Alright, let's go back down. Because... We're gonna jump back down into the... Yeah, um, elevator motion still does the bouncy thing. So we're just gonna bounce here for a second. Alrighty. Here we go. 
not really using a whole lot of power because all I have running is the all I have running is the centrifuge. Now I have gone through and set the nanite production factory to something relatively specific. And I tried going through and testing the range on the nanites, but I think it's 500 meters for the construction, 300 meters for the mining and uh, cleanup and medical and all that stuff. I'm not sure on a whole lot of the particulars, but I only have it set up. I'll go, go up here and show you. I do have to move these stairs because it does have upgrades that I can plug onto the side of this. And those fit in those squares there. But all I have this set up for right now is mining. And it is really, really cool that we have a mod like the Nanites that does this. Because I'll show you over here. I don't know how much power this thing has, but right now it's off. This thing. The N-U-H-O-L, and I'm not entirely sure what the an acronym stands for, but you basically have to have it in a voxel, which is where I have it now. And it will go through and detect the ores that you have in the area. Like I'll show you over here. A couple of solar and a battery just for kicks. Um, somebody was telling me about a, uh, a mod that I might implement here. So we're going to set you to semi-auto for the moment. And this thingy, as long as you go through and have things selected, like right now all I have is gold. You know, if you have it deselected, like if it doesn't have this bar over it, it'll ignore those ores. And really the only thing I have around here is silver and gold anyway. So that's a thing. And it's going to go through and get gold. And I can turn this on. Turn that on for a few. It's not going to run very long because it doesn't have a whole lot of power. But it has that little thing there. And I don't know if you can hear it or it's just the fact that I have like 7.1 surround speakers, but boom, there's actually a little bass hit there. Just like that. It's actually really cool. And it'll go through and the nanites will seek out this little antenna and gather all the ores and things like that that the new hall is actually mining. So let's see if it works. I don't know. I haven't tested it yet. And every single aspect of the nanites requires so much power. So that's why we had to wait. Oh, starting up. <gasps> there it goes. There they go. They're going out here. And they're hitting it and they're going into... They will likely not get to this gold first, but... They'll go through and seek out the ores and things like that and just get the ores that you want. It will not touch the surrounding stone. So if you're at a point where you're like, I really don't freaking need any more stone or any more ice. Like I've got like crap tons of ice. I really do not need any more ice, <clears throat> but it'll go through and mine all those things for you. And the green is it has stuff and it's headed back to the main base. And it tells you how much ore is in the area, how much ore is detected. And that sh that value should drop over time as it gets the ore that you need. 
I would love it if the nanite attached to the station had a longer range on the station. Because one of the things that I probably kind of need to do is get or uranium and actually plug in a small you know a, a, a small reactor in here because the solar planet based solution for the solar is just not awesome so we're gonna find gonna have to find a way to get more power and you know what Boris I'm gonna finish your painting here but there is a mod that I kind of know about and was kind of pointed out to me by one of the viewers that is another wireless power solution and this could be a good thing I haven't loaded the mod into the world yet but I am going to test it and see if it's going to be something that is viable but yeah the the problem with it only being like a few hundred meters and whatnot from the from the nanites is like if it's attached to a station I have iron 2.61 kilometers from, you know, the Rickman complex. I have it out there. It's almost as if I'd have to establish an entire mining colony or a mining outpost over there near the iron with its own nanites and its own new hall and everything like that just to exploit that iron reserve over there and get a way to transport it back to the station. Gonna have to figure out a few things and I am completely open su to suggestions from you guys. So that is definitely a thing that can happen. Um, it's the middle of the night right now and I've shown you everything I could show you right now. Let's see how our power is doing since we have the mining nanites running. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna drop. Just cause I'm gonna drop. That's not too bad. You know, drop 3% in a few minutes. It's not too bad. Ooh. Power time is very fluctuating. It's dropping hard. Oh. Okay, every time it sends out a series of nanites, it takes a bit of power. It takes 26.3 megawatts. Every time it sends it out. And every time it sends it out, it's like 3% of my power reserves. That makes sense. That is something to consider. So we'll see how this pans out. I may be able to start everything. Let me see if I can start everything back up. Cause I've got the refinery offline. I've got the arc reactors offline or the arc. Uh, yeah, those things. The arc furnaces offline. <clears throat> I think the assemblers are online. Okay, the assemblers are online. Stone Crusher, are you online? Yeah, you're online. Um, centrifuge, you're online. Okay, Arc Furnace. Yeah, those are all offline. So we can turn those, wait. Those are online. Refinery. You're going on. So, with everything in the station running, let's see, including the nanite factory, which I'm not gonna have building anything yet. With everything running, 
the output is 27.5 megawatts. So, yeah, and it drops at a whole 1%. Um, and M Master Script, with the timing block, refreshes every second. So, that is definitely a thing. So every time the Nanite sends out a stream, we drop 1% power. So it'll take a while to get all of that. But it's still a thing. Oh no, just 4%. Never mind. Or, uh, 4 tenths of a percent. That's actually rather good. But I am going to turn on the construction because the rest of this base needs built. Especially those uh, solar on the side. So I'm going to turn those on. Repair construction. Yeah. That's turned on. Now we're going to see how our power is doing. Watch the power. Let's see. Let's take a look over here. I don't think it's going to be doing anything yet. I have the sun rotation set at two hours. So a lot of the times that, that has a thing. So it's two hours day, two hours night, four hours total. Are the nanites going to... Yeah. They're heading out to do repairs and construction. That's where they're going. Yeah. I think what it is, is that the curve blocks, Space Engineers considers them to be broken. I don't know why, but they're considered to be broken sometimes when the world loads in because they deform a little bit. Yeah, see? It reformed them a little bit. But we'll leave this running for a little bit. I'll let you know how it goes. And, um... Wow. That's awesome and crazy at the same time. Oh! I think it's coming out here and doing these. I think it did. Guys, the nanites are really awesome. Thank you, Tirsis, for the nanites. Those are freaking amazing. And I'm mining and constructing. Maybe I can set off the mining because it's just gold. But yeah, some longer range for the station version of this thing would be awesome. Like, I don't know, three kilometers? Because reasonably, that's about where the, you know, a lot of the ores are whenever you set up the base. They're like really close to about three kilometers. Get that stuff over there, the iron. Yeah, most of the stuff is within three kilometers. So if you set it to three kilometers, for the station version, not for like the large ship or the small ship version. <clears throat> I don't think there is a small ship version, but yeah. Three kilometers for the station version would be really kind of awesome. I would really, really appreciate that. But anyway, that's it for today. They're busy doing their thing. See you later, Dutchie.